right? So the name that you see there is not actually a thing, right? Um, I was really keen to come to Australia for, for USAR for multiple reasons, because first of all, because it's awesome. And also because I didn't get to be there last year because I was having a baby. Well, my girlfriend was having a baby, but I was keen to be there. Um, so because I really wanted to be here, I submitted two talks. Um, not because I wanted to do both, but as a way for the conference organizers to tell me which one to do. And so it was kind of a gimmick for me to be, to force myself to, to do the, the, the work. And so they asked me to choose myself. <laughs> so then I, cho I chose to present uh, the one about Arrow. Uh, that's what I, I decided. And unfortunately, I've not done that much work on it. It's, it's planned. That's, that's, that's some work I will do like in the really near future. And, um, but equally, I didn't do too much work on Ergo as well. So I'm, I'm just doing lots of promises today. Let, let's, let's see how this goes. I, I have a few slides for you. Um, yeah, I'm traveling with my daughter uh, to this conference. And uh, so there's a few things I wanted to say about, these, uh, about that slide. She's having a great time. And uh, I have the conference and the community to thank for that because of a few things like code of conduct and uh, childcare. That's amazing. Thank you so much. And uh, the other thing I want to say about this is that I work uh, for our studio now. And that's great. I can elaborate, but I don't have time for that right now. Um, so that's my other kid. She's not coming. That was her reaction when I first uh, did this uh, thing. And she's one years old today. I, I don't expect you to sing happy birthday. But. <laughs> and so sometimes she would join me to the Tidyverse meetings, and that's a great way to get her to, to, get, to, to sleep. Forget about singing songs. Just do like a meeting about anything Tidyverse, and she'll just well, that doesn't work every time. Sometimes she plays. So let's talk a bit about Arrow. So Apache Arrow, that's, um, that's like a, a, a thing to, uh, to have a, a data format that will be shared across multiple languages. So the goal is to have the same format and um, have implementations of that for like R, Python, Go, C++, Java whatever language, you, you, you just name it, and uh, there's probably someone working on it. There's a Rust implementation, for example. And so uh, I'm supposed to be working on this, and this will happen uh, pretty soon. Um, so on, on top there, there's a few, a few lines of, uh, of Python to define some, some arrow um, like metadata structure, you, you, you define the kind of structure you, you put in your, in your data format. It's quite Pythonic. Uh, maybe that's because I, I don't do Python too much. But so uh, we are aiming to, to have like an R spin on that and have uh, the syntax that we have uh, downstairs there. I believe that's nicer, but you know. And um, this is about the extent of what I have on, on, on Arrow. And we'll go much further. We'll you know, read files and then share things between Python and, and, and R and stuff. But it's going to happen later. So we have a lot of plans uh, for, for, for the future. Uh, we're going to use this like a, a behind uh, next version of Sparkly R. We want to do like a, date, um, like a deep layer backend. Uh, we want to elaborate on, on Feather. Feather was kind of a proof of concept of using Arrow, um, and, then, and then some other stuff. Right, so now I want to talk about Ergo. So the, the E doesn't really mean anything, but then it makes a, it makes a word. I'll do questions uh, later, Dirk. Um, so the R is R, and Go is uh, Go, but it's not either this one or this one. Although I like both of, of those things, this is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the, the Go. Uh, language. That's a fairly recent language um, developed mostly at, at Google. Um, 
the language is so nice. Um, it's simple. It, it's open source. That's a great thing. It's, uh, it's fast enough. It's not as fast as C++, so you lose a bit because there's a garbage collector. But you gain that the language doesn't have that strong taste for complexity that C++ has sometimes. And it's developed right in with uh, concurrency, uh, like built in, and then parallelization and stuff. That's a, that's a great language. So having done a lot of work on RCPP before, I thought, eh, let's do the same with, with Go. Why not? Let's, uh, it's all about interoperability. If you, if you were there yesterday for, the, um, for Kelly's talk, that's the kind of things that we like. That's the kind of thing that, that I've always liked, um, to connect R with other languages, to have, to have the choice, not necessarily because this will be better or whatever, but just so that we have the choice to express our algorithm with another language. Another language. A few things that have, been on, that have been built on top of Go that you might know about. So there's Docker. That's quite, that's quite nice. There's Go underneath. Uh, closer, to, closer to Ohm, there's a... If any of you have built a website with a block down, there's, this is based on Ugo, and Ugo is uh, coded in Go. So that, that's, uh, that's a pretty nice way to make a static website. Um, so that's that's uh, pretty cool. And uh, another thing you might not know about is that our um, our Studio Connect, the uh, internals of the server side, is um, a lot of Go code. So that's a nice. Uh, if you've not seen Connect, we have a lot of brochures on the on the booth. Uh, feel free to come and talk to us. It's um, it's like a hub for your shiny apps, your Markdown documents, and and plenty of other stuff. That makes it really easy to um, distribute to your uh, colleagues within your organization. Right, so let's see some Go code now. Let's, let's get technical, right? So that's uh, every Go function or every Go thing lives in a, in a package, right? So, and that's what you say on the, on the top of the file there. So you say that this thing lives in package main. And you need other packages um, to use your uh, to do something with your with your code, right? So you import the FMT packages so that you do some formatting, and then you, you define a function. So I I just I was I wanted to have like a function that was not too easy but not too difficult, and that would actually be useful to to people who travel like me and and end up in countries having that such a weird. Um, scale for temperature. It, what, come on. <laughs> Be real. Right, so, uh, so the go func so you have the keyword func, whatever. The name of the, f uh, what, yeah, okay. The name of the function and then parameters, um, just like an just like an R function or any other function from uh, other languages. The type goes after the name. That's, that's a trend in, in like new languages, like Julia does stuff like that. And then the return type goes at the end also after the list of parameters. And then it's just like an arithmetic uh, thing there. Right, and then you call that in the, in the main function there. I just added a few examples to, to see uh, what are the uh, freezing and uh, boiling temperature of water in that, in that, uh, in that scale of, uh, of yours, right? <laughs> Does Australia do uh, Fahrenheit or Celsius? Nice. <laughs> right. Okay. Then, if I go in there, I can do. I can run that that code and and see that water boils at 212 Fahrenheit. That is so nice. Right, and that's that's the extent of the of the kind of. 
code that I want to I want to show you. It doesn't cover the like the complexity of what you can do with 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 Go, and the extent of what you can build with it. I just wanted to have an example, and then we'll make an R package with that example inside. Right. So I've, we've seen that. So what I'm presenting is based on on sort of research work, weekend work, um, whenever whenever I want to do anything work. Uh, that I've done last last uh, summer, and uh, that's uh, there's a list of blog blog posts on my on my blog. I'm mostly going to talk about this uh, this one. So to embed that into a package, we want to have the situation where we can load that finite package and call the function to get some uh, some results there. Right, and then it, when we have that function, we can tidyverse it to. Uh, you know, to, for example, get a table of uh, current temperatures in Brisbane, um, in Celsius and, and Fahrenheit. Because I just wanted to have stickers on my, uh, on my uh, slides. Right. Okay, so a package with Go code looks pretty much like a, package, a normal R package, but it contains extra things for Go in the... Uh, I've chosen to put this in the src slash go slash src directory. So you have um, two packages, the, the Fahrenheit package, which has regular Go code, and the other one, which is more plumbing to make the other one work. Let's get to that in a second. So that's the only function that ultimately, when Ergo is ready, you would have to write to make that available to your to your R package. And just note that the function starts with a capital letter. That's, that's Go's way to say that th that function is exported to other packages. That's weird when you start to use it, but you get used to it and yeah, whatever. Uh, so that's the function. That's the only thing ultimately you would have to write, okay? But then to make that work, you have to generate a lot of things and this is what Ergo is supposed to be doing like whenever it's ready. Right, so you have to have to have another Go package that, because I'm building a shared library, I need, I need a main uh, package so that it's a real application. And so this one, what, the only thing that it does is call the other function, right? So you can see that it, this could really easily be generated automatically. It's like really boilerplate. Right. So that's Go code. Then on top of that, I need some, some C code with the, with the C API of, of R. That, that speaks for itself, right? So you are calling the Fahrenheit uh, function. That's the, the one in the main package. And then you return that into uh, a Scala uh, to the R side. You need an, an R function to call that C function that calls that Go function that calls that Go function. Yeah, I'm having fun. <laughs> then you need to play with the make vars so that you invoke the Go compiler to, you know, to compile your Go code into your package. But once that's, once that's done, then you're ready. You can, you can use your package and, and uh, so if I'm there, for example, so that's, that's quite a lot of stuff that happens, Go compiles, all of that, but then you end up with, a, with a, an R package that, that's just been loaded like any, any other one. And then you can do like Fahrenheit of, uh, it's 20, 20 Celsius now, so temperature now in, 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 in Brisbane is uh, 68 Fahrenheit. Okay. Right, so the future of this is to have all of that boilerplate code generated automatically, kind of like what happened in, in RCPP with, um, with the attributes uh, part of it. And uh, to, to do that, I need, I need funding somehow. So I, I uh, proposed that to the, to the consortium, and unfortunately, this was not picked up. The, well, the good news is that uh, people got interested and people submitted pull requests to the, to the proposal document. So there's general interest on the, on the project, and I, I 
still want to do it. It might take more time. It might take me to bang on someone, someone else's door, like Google, for example. If, if there's someone from Google interested in going this way, then let's, let's talk, right? Uh, so, and yeah, so the project wasn't picked up, and this is really sad to receive uh, such, a, such an email from, from Adley. We, uh, we speak like weekly, and this is really nice, and you just don't, you know, this is emoji sad. <laughs> but that's the only email I received from him uh, that made me sad, so that's okay. Uh, and then I'll take a few questions if you have some. I know that Dirk has some. Thanks for waiting. As you had the slide up there with arrow and the int32 in 64 explicit, just how Python has more types and of course the underlying has. What's, I hadn't looked, I mean, what's the plan for when that gets mapped into R because some conversions will be lossy, right? So what's, what do you guys think is the best way about that? We, we are discussing this at the moment. It might just be like external pointers so that we keep the real uh, data without, touch, without touching it. It, it. it might go the alt right way. We don't, we don't really know that at the moment. We're trying to avoid to make copies because that's the whole thing of Arrow. You're not supposed to make copies of, of the data. You're supposed to just be able to use it from the various different languages. So 